You may have heard me and other teachers talk about how if something feels like a really big deal, like it was going to change your life, that its manifestation is usually far away because the things that are about to manifest feel like no big deal, like they're the next logical step, like um, it's something that, well, of course that's going to happen, yeah? Um, and so today's question is, is it then better not to get too excited about things or focus on things in a way that's really, really exciting to us because doesn't that feel like it's a really big deal? And wouldn't it be better to just kind of practice being blasé about it, like it's no big deal in order to speed up our manifestations? Stay tuned and find out what I have to say. Hey, my happy sunny puppies. This is Melody Fletcher, author of Deliberate Receiving. Finally, the universe makes some freaking sense. And today I've got a question from awesome Courtney whose burning question is, Hi Melody, my question is about excitement exhilaration. One morning after waking up excited about the day and catapulting out of bed, I felt inclined to Google the feeling of excitement in relation to LOA. I guess I expected to see a laundry list of positive results and reinforcement. Yes, get super excited, it's the best idea. But instead, I saw a lot of warnings about excitement, taking you to a place of high state vibration that is rooted in wanting and needing. I totally understand how being constantly hyped up and especially focused on trying to be hyped up can hinder your manifestations. I get the concept of detachment. I don't think that's the part I'm struggling to grasp. What I'm reading is that it's wrong to feel too passionate or excited about your dreams and goals and that the ideal feeling is nonchalant, ordinary. I'm having trouble with this. How do you feel ordinary and nonchalant about something that makes you so freaking happy? And doesn't that contradict the feeling good perspective? How can you know the difference between feeling good and feeling too good to the point of desperation? Isn't trying to maintain, I bet you just heard that, isn't trying to maintain that enough to make you go crazy? Am I in the matrix? What year is it? <laughs> well, awesome, Courtney. I'm going to zero right in on the thing that, you know, hopefully caught your attention as well. I'm going to reread it here. How can you know the difference between feeling good and feeling too good to the point of desperation? Well, if you have read my book or if you have been on my blog for a while, you have, uh, will have seen the concept of the spectrum of empowerment where I mapped out all of the emotions the negative side and the positive side. And um, you got to know that desperation is nowhere near feeling really, really good. So it isn't like you feel good, you feel good, you feel good, and then you swap over into desperation. <laughs> yeah, that's not how that works. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of limiting beliefs at play here, and there's a lot of confusion here. And so I'm going to do my best to clear that up for you here today. So first of all, there is nothing wrong with wanting. People always go on and on about wanting. And again, this is how I view it. This is how I explain it. And hopefully once I've explained it, it will make sense. Um, and you might find that other teachers out there seem to contradict this. Yeah, nothing I can do about that. See which answer you resonate more with. But there's nothing wrong with wanting in the way that I speak about it. Because you can't stop wanting. You're a wanting machine. You are a creator. Yeah, but there's a big difference between wanting and needing, and the two become so ingrained in our, um, in our belief system in this society that we often confuse them for each other when they're not the same thing at all. When we need something, we need it for survival, and that's what's actually happening in the brain. The reptilian brain kicks in, all the neurological pathways are kicking in that say, if I do not get this thing, I'm not going to be okay. My survival is being threatened. The problem is for most of us, certainly those people who are watching this video on a computer, yeah, you're probably not out there, you know, dealing with survival issues. You probably have enough food to stay alive and you have shelter to sleep under and you have enough protection from the elements and from predators that that's not really a big concern for you. Um, so when we're talking about needing, the stuff that gets activated in need is actually our survival mechanism. That doesn't have anything to do with wanting. Like I said, you can't stop wanting. You are a creator. Creators want. Think of it this way. 
an artist who is working on a masterpiece can already be enjoying the vision of the next five sculpture, sculptures that he's going to create or the next five paintings that he's going to create or the next five books that she's going to write, yeah? There is no desperation in that. There is only, oh my God, I'm loving this and I'm gonna love the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. The problem is that we have a very strong belief in our society that says that we don't get to need, we don't get to want something unless we need it, which means that we only get to want from a place of dissatisfaction. So let me demonstrate this, yeah? You don't get to buy a new pair of shoes you don't even get to want a new pair of shoes. It's not okay for you to want a new pair of shoes unless you need a new pair of shoes. So if you have a party to go to and you bought a new dress and you don't have any shoes to wear for that party, well, suddenly you get to want a new pair of shoes. But you cannot just look at your closet and say, oh, I'd love to have a new pair of shoes. No, 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 no. That's greedy. You don't get to want unless you need. This is a powerful, powerful belief that gets in the way, which means that we only allow ourselves to want freely from a place of dissatisfaction, which means that now we have coupled dissatisfaction with wanting, and wanting often doesn't feel good. So what happens is that if you can give yourself permission to want without the need, you decouple them, then wanting becomes this pure thing. Like I said, the artist creating and already wanting to create the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Yeah, it's just getting excited, like sitting on the roller coaster and being excited about the other roller coasters that you're also going to go on without taking anything away from the roller coaster that you're currently enjoying. It's a completely different mindset. Yeah? Desperation comes in when we think we need what we want. But here's the thing, and here's the thing that you really want to remember, and you might want to put this on a post-it note or tattoo it somewhere on your body, yeah, maybe a temporary tattoo, uh, because you will get this after a while, is nobody needs an iPhone. Nobody needs the latest toy. Nobody needs a car. Nobody needs computers. We don't need any of these things to survive. And yet, if we were only allowed to want that which we need, then guess what? We would all still be living in the Stone Ages. We would all still be Neanderthals because we had what we needed to survive. But our lives aren't about surviving. They're about thriving. We don't need any of the things that we've created. Nobody needed a microprocessor that allows us to have a computer that is far more powerful than anything we've ever seen before in the palm of our hands. Nobody needs that to survive, but we want it. And we can enjoy it. And it has catapulted us into an age where we are now creating things that past generations couldn't even imagine in their wildest dreams. It is about evolution creation, which is fueled by wanting, pure wanting, has nothing to do with desperation and needing anything. And the faster you allow yourself to want without need, the more creative you'll become. Because you'll drop the justification that you need in order to want. Do you see? It becomes so much more fun like a child in a room full of beautiful and wonderful toys. You don't need to justify that which you want. The child doesn't go, oh, well, do I have a need for that? Why am I allowed to play with that? I gotta come up with some reason. When's the last time that you stood in the store and you found a purse or some other item or maybe an electronic store and you saw the latest iPhone or whatever, and you tried to come up with some justification for why it's okay for you to buy that thing? Instead of just, I want it, I can afford it. It's okay. Yeah? Why is you wanting something and it making you feel good not enough justification? Well, how about you just choose that it is? Yeah? So now that I've credit, kind of created this basis with this explanation, let's take a look at your question, which is, is it possible to become too excited um, to take ourselves, so, so that we take ourselves out of the flow of the manifestation? 
and swap into desperation. No, it is not. Desperation is nowhere near exhilaration. So here's the thing. When something feels like it's too big a deal, you can't get into a state of exhilaration, true exhilaration about it. Yeah? What you're doing is you're faking it. When you're desperate and you think in your acceleration, you're faking it. You're trying to be exhilarated about it, but you're not. It doesn't actually feel good. When you're truly in exhilaration, that's why I say you can't fake this. You have to actually feel the way you want to feel. And when you're truly in the state of exhilaration, which means you're doing it just because it's fun to do it. You're not even doing it to make anything happen anymore. You're just doing it because it's a fun fantasy for you to engage with. It's a fun vibration for you to be in, and it just feels so good and yay. Then you're in the flow, you see. So here's what happens. You reach for the best feeling on that subject that you have access to, which might not yet be exhilaration, but it's the best feeling. And sometimes that'll just feel in the beginning like relief. Relief from pain, relief from needing, relief from desperation, yeah? You're gonna feel relief, so you reach for the best feeling, and as you acclimate to that, you get access to the next highest feeling. So you reach for that, and then as you acclimate to that, you get access to the next highest feeling. So when you're in desperation, you don't have access to acceleration, you just don't. You can fake it, you can be delusional about it, but you just don't. So what do you trust? You trust how you feel. Do you actually feel good? Or are you noticing that you don't actually feel so good? Yeah? Are you just pretending to feel good? Do you feel good intellectually because you're thinking intellectually positive thoughts that should feel good? Or do you actually feel good? And in order to actually feel good, you have to be honest about and admit how you actually feel right now. So if you feel like shit right now, then notice I feel like shit. So what's the thing that I can reach for that feels better than shit? Yeah? instead of just let me reach right for exhilaration. You know when you're feeling really, really good. Trust that you're feeling really, really good because I can feel that you generally are feeling really, really good, so don't shit all over that by questioning whether or not feeling really, really, really good is good. That's another living belief that has come out and been mirrored back to you and has just bit you a little bit in the ass here, yeah? And so that's what this is about for you. Is it okay for me to feel really, really good or am I doing something wrong? Then I'm here to tell you, Nope, you are allowed to feel really, really good. So choose to honor yourself. Choose the perspective that it's okay to be happy and it's okay to have an awesome life. And it's okay to get everything that you ever wanted. And you can let go of all those beliefs that say, that's not a good thing and you're not allowed to have that unless you have a justification and you can't want something unless you need it. This is a really, really big concept that we discussed here today. And it takes some practice and some reminding yourself, yeah? Because you might be hearing all of your grandparents and parents' voices in your head saying, but you don't need that. Yeah, but you want it. Let that be good enough. So I hope I've answered your question. I think I may have given you a lot more than you were asking for. But I gave you what you were matched to. So. This has been Melody Fletcher, author of Deliberate Receiving. Finally, the universe makes some freaking sense with this week's LOA Q&A. I will see you guys next week. Bye.